Okay, we are back again once with our favorite chef, Chef Roberta Capsalianis. Capsalis. Capsalis. Sorry, the emphasis is you on the second. You just told me Roberta of Gringo's Keto. Gringo's Keto. We're going to be making today, since you guys love the carnivore piece, we're going to make an actually a carnivore pasta using some very interesting ingredients. So I will let, uh, well, first of all, let me just remind you guys that this is a retreat here. We're doing this in Herzegovina in, near Mostar. Next year, we'll be doing something similar in Greece. So if you are interested in participating and trying some of this outstanding food, and I assure you it's outstanding, sign up, go to Grico's Keto, and let them know you're interested. All right, well, go ahead and let's get started. Okay, hello, Grico's Keto fans who are seeing us live now, and ho hello to all the carnivore tribe in the world, uh, Dr. Sean Baker's fans. I want to uh, present to you my zero carb pasta, zero carb tagliatelle or spaghetti, whatever you want. So here we have approximately 30 eggs. And the only two extra ingredients we used is the uh, flour of sea salt, use sea salt or whatever salt you prefer. And something which is very unusual, you can see it here. Okay, some of you might say it's not very carnivore, but carnivores use spices. This is going to kill the eggy flavor. And how is it gonna do it? Mahlepi, the Greeks know it, people of Arabian world know it. Mahlepi is a seed of a wild cherry. Uh, this seed is being uh, dried and ground into powder, as you can see, and you need very little of it in order to mask, or let's say, uh, remove the eggy flavor or to make the pastry what the, those people who use, the wheat and other cereals used to make it taste and smell better. Our uh, carnivore pasta is going to feel, taste awesome. It's gonna have great nutrients, as you know. And then we're gonna uh, cover it with a beautiful alla bolognese sauce, but it's gonna be a Greek version of bolognese sauce made with ground lamb, which actually was slaughtered this morning. So it's as fresh as it can be. We were lucky to get this and it's going to give a twist to the italian version you know okay italians say that they are the kings of pasta i would say the carnivores could be king kings and queens of pasta so let's give it a try what we're gonna do this mixture of eggs machlepi and sea salt as you can see here is going to be our butter for the crepes well you notice i'm saying crepes because it's a French word, we are here in Europe. You guys in USA, you say crepes. So whatever you call them, just think of them as your base for the carnivore pasta. Here I'm using the tea tool, which is actually gonna help me spread my uh, butter, actually my whisk eggs, in this case, zero carb. Well, those miniature uh, content of carbs in eggs could go even lower if you use quail eggs because quail eggs have like less than one gram of carbs and these hen eggs have around one something like that okay so we are going to spread these so that we have a nice crepe crepe le crepe or as the greeks say crepa we have to learn all the european words the French say they invented crepes, so they let's did. call it the crepe. But I think ancient Greeks, they had crepes too. They had some kind of a pancake. So we're gonna just leave it a little bit. You can do it with a pan if you want, if you, you don't have this type of, uh, we call it crepiera here in Europe. It's like a machine which is just hot plates. Some of you are using those hot plates for the pancakes. Use it for this, it's perfect. So you have your spatula, you wait a little bit. You can see that the egg wrap, as some people call it, or the crepe, is not ready yet because it's still raw in the middle and it's still runny. You can get the feeling from, uh, by moving a little bit the, yeah, there's a lot of steam. This is just water, guys. You know that eggs contain a lot of water, so uh, we have to wait for all the water to evaporate and we have to wait for this central piece to be cooked so that we can flip our crepe. So just let's be a little bit patient. 
So, do you think this is gonna taste good, Dr. Baker? No, I'm looking. I know it's gonna taste good. Uh -huh. Looking forward to it. It's nice of you to see. So, uh, it's we're getting there, but we can just leave it a few seconds more. Maybe I, I used a little bit more eggs, so this is a thick crepe. If I used less eggs, it would be already ready. <laughs> so let's see now if we can. Yeah, we can flip it. It's kind of ready. Careful not to break it. If you break it, don't worry. Anyway, you will be cutting this in strips. So it's going to be okay. There we are. It's like a crepe. That looks like a real crepe. Yeah, doesn't it? It looks like a real one. Well, it is a real one. It just doesn't contain flour. It doesn't mm -hmm. contain anything else. And how does it smell to you? Does it smell like eggs? No. Yes. It like actually yeah, it smells does. like mahlepi. It has this uh, good, fresh feeling. Okay, mm. we're, yeah. some people don't have access to very fresh eggs, so for them, if they don't have mahlepi, which they can get online, they could use nutmeg, they could use white pepper, black pepper, red pepper, peppercorn actually, I think you call it in English. So this is like just 10 more seconds, shall we count? Mm. Okay, let's count in French. Un, un, deux, deux, deux trois, trois, quatre, quatre, quatre cinq, cinq, six, six, six sept, sept, huit, huit neuf, neuf, dix, dix, Ready, thank you for teaching me some French. There we are, guys. Now, in order to make uh, pasta from this, I'll just show you one and then we will, uh, oh yeah, I could lift it up, why not? Here you are for Grigos Keto Fans. Here's our, you know this recipe, you can visit Grigos Keto, we have it as a, a written recipe on our website, just write zero carb tagliatelle. So, what we're gonna do now? We are going to roll this in order to make sure it's easier to make noodles. So we're gonna transfer it here to the cutting board and then we're gonna cut small, small pieces. If I waited a little bit longer for the crepe to cool, it would be even better. But maybe I could use a different knife let's see this knife oh yeah a small knife does the job much better so we're gonna cut it in strips it's very hot burning my fingers I should have waited but I was so so eager to show you how you can make this wonderful pasta well carnivore pasta and then you can use any sauce, but later we're going to show you how to make lamb, uh, let's call it bolognese, but yeah, meat sauce. Of course, if you don't have lamb, if it's not available to you, use any meat that you can find in your area. This one we can cut like this. Okay, I'm going to get a plate. Just a moment, please. I'm sorry. I'm going to get a plate so everybody can see the consistency of this. Uh, noodles that we got here have a look wow. this is gonna be like tagliatelle if you don't know what are tagliatelle it's Italian pasta which usually has this uh, uh, well it should be a little bit thinner so the next crepe we're gonna make we're gonna make it slightly thinner but this is exactly what pasta should look like now guys if you don't want it to be so yellow you can use let's say 10 egg whites and then just two or three egg yolks so that way it's gonna be more white more more like real pasta and then you use the yolks for the meat sauce we are going to add quail eggs to our meat sauce because we want to nutritious quail eggs goes go very well with uh, uh, they go very well with anything that uh, that's made with like, gay, as you say, gamey meat. We, for us, lamb is not gamey, but if you want it to, to fix the flavor and to actually enjoy it, then use quail eggs. They're much more gentle in flavor. I'm gonna add just a couple of slices of butter to the pasta because I want it to be glossy, shiny, like uh, to get that feeling of 
real pasta while it's still hot later we're gonna mix it and we're gonna put some meat sauce on it and we're gonna enjoy it okay so we have finished roberta has finished making the crepes and cut those up into various noodles now we're going to go ahead and start making the actual uh, bolognese, the lamb bolognese, or bo lamb athenese, as athenese, she wants to say. Yes. Athenese, it's just Greek. Anyway, let's go check this out now. We're going to make some slight changes to uh, standard meat sauce that's very famous all around the world as bolognese sauce. Pasta bolognese, the Italians would say. Well, we, the Ketonians and carnival people, we want to give it uh, a different name and different feeling. So we will not be using many spices, a lot of them, but we will use some because still this is Mediterranean carnivore approach. So uh, to color our pasta meat sauce, we will not use tomato sauce as they usually do. We're gonna use something that wolves and dogs, which we know are car carnivorous animals, uh, go and eat sometimes in the nature, even though it's not their main food, but they sometimes have a taste of it. Especially if they're sick, they want to heal because this is a uh, fruit that's very rich in vitamin C, extremely low in uh, sugar, like almost no sugar. It's called rose hips. Many of you might have heard about it. We will use rose hips tea as our uh, colorant. We're gonna color our sauce because we don't use it. We could use some paprika. We will be using some red paprika powder, but in that case, uh, it will not be totally like tomato. It's gonna be similar, but not totally. And of course, we're gonna use uh, quail eggs to make that creamy feeling so that our meat sauce looks like a real sauce. Now, I have a wonderful thing to show you since this is a carnivore channel. Here's a ground lamb that was slaughtered this morning. It's extremely fresh. It's like super, super fresh, smells wonderful, smells health. Uh, proper human diet, as our friend uh, Dr. Barry would say. say. So here we have uh, approximately two kilos, which is like four pounds of meat. We are going to melt some butter. Let's use one of these slices. It's gonna be more than enough. I already put some small amount of butter inside. Let's melt it over medium temperature. You don't want it to burn. Why you don't want it to uh, burn? When it's caramelized, it tends to get bitter. So you don't want a bitter sauce. You want your sauce to be, to have this umami or, uh, you know, this feeling that's, that's really giving good feeling when you're eating these Mediterranean traditional dishes, everything that is made with cheese, with uh, butter, with other types of dairy, such as cream or mascarpone cheese. All of these things can stay in butter only if you use uh, butter up to the moment before it turns brown. So as you can see here, we are uh, melting some butter. And it would be ideal if you can find goat or sheep butter or even buffalo butter. That gives even more Mediterranean twist to it. If not, just regular butter will do. You can use ghee. You can use tallow. Sometimes I use lamb tallow for cooking. When I'm starting, I use lamb tallow and then I brown the meat, whatever meat I use even. Now you're gonna be surprised, I cook sardines with tallow. Now you're mixing two totally different things, but it tastes beautiful. I use tallow for keto desserts. Now this is something totally different subject. I should not mention dessert on carnival channel, but yeah, keto people do occasional desserts. So it's ready as you can see now we're going to be slowly adding some of the meat we're going to toss it in and we're going to be cooking with uh, with passion as we say in mediterranean everything is passion in mediterranean so take all the mediterranean people uh, the north of africa spain uh, france uh, Italy, Greeks, of course, and let's not forget us over here in the zone of Adriatic Sea. We all have this passion for cooking, passion for sharing, family feeling uh, like we want family and friends to feel good, to eat good, and you can't feel good if you don't eat good. So guys, eat good, preferably carnivore. If you're doing keto, that's also good. We're doing keto Mediterranean, it's perfect. 
but don't ever go vegan, please, because that's like really unhealthy, but it's another subject. Okay, so uh, I have much more meat than, uh, than my pan takes, but in a couple of minutes, we're gonna show you how it looks when it's all nice and brown, and then we're ready for the spices. And finally, we're adding eggs and roast uh, tea, of course. If you don't want it, you can just keep it. Use red paprika and that's gonna be your red color for the sauce. One. Okay, and so this wonderful lamb that was walking around earlier this morning is now brown. The vegans are gonna go crazy on this, but we have this brown lamb and we're gonna continue making this sauce. And everybody, tell us what we're gonna do with this. So it's brown and butter. It's enough. You don't need to overdo it. You need all this lumpy juices. So I'm gonna add quail eggs. How many quail eggs is that about? Well, we could count because some of them, when we cracked them, the, the yolks broke, but it's like, I think it could be like 12, 15, 15 okay. around 12, 15, exactly. So uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of our colorful uh, rose hip tea. You can see here, it looks almost like blood. So it is carnivorous. Uh, so this is gonna give some liquid and some uh, sauce to the mixture. I'm gonna add it here as well. Oops, that's okay. So here are our spices. We're gonna use smoked paprika powder. Why? Well, we want it Mediterranean. We want to have some uh, smoky aroma, some flavor of smoky stuff. So we are going to add this to the eggs. And you can add just a little bit or a little bit more. As you can see, I have a lot of meat here in two of my pans, so I'll add it's approximately one tablespoon. Here we have a Greek mixture that maybe some of you saw in the previous video, which we did together. It's uh, uh, for gyros. Gyros is this rotisserie, typical Greek uh, uh, meat dish. So we are going to add, let's say, like a teaspoon, I know approximately. What we have here is garlic powder, some herbs such as oregano, thyme. Uh, sometimes Greeks add peppermint, uh, dried peppermint. Guys, uh, if you uh, would like to digest meat, good peppermint and rosemary are the best things. So if you like to add spices to your meat, peppermint and rosemary will surprise you. If you don't have dried peppermint, you do have some peppermint tea. Just open that uh, bag and add it to your sauce and it's gonna smell divine. It's gonna fix the flavor for you. And you can get used to uh, the gamey flavor, which some people complain. You could use, for example, venison. Venison is awesome for dishes like this. And then add all these spices and you will be surprised how good it tastes. So black pepper, of course, it's something that we use a lot in cooking, so I will be adding that at the end. Why at the end? Because black pepper turns bitter if you cook it for long. Like this will be cooked for at least 10 more minutes. So I don't want to make it bitter. At the end, just before I'm gonna turn the stove off, I'm gonna add black pepper, and then you will see the next stage when you actually get a plate of pasta, as you can see here. It's getting ready, more and more of carnivore pasta is getting ready. Somebody would say that's just eggs. Trust us, it's not just eggs, it's much more than eggs. It's a lot of love inside. Passion, as I said. And of course, some spices. You, if you watch the video, you know what I talk about. So, you can have a look here. This is gonna give the creaminess, and this is gonna give our uh, Afgolemono flavor. You know, the Greeks uh, uh, know what's up with lemon. It's a sauce made with lemon and uh, eggs, but we will not be using lemon here. We have rose hip. Rose hip is already a little bit acidic. So the reaction, as some of you know already, when you mix eggs with any type of acid, like vinegar, for example, but we like to use lemon or rose hips, it uh, thickens. So we will have a thick sauce, nice, creamy, thick sauce. And then, of course, we're gonna add some extra butter to make it silky, smooth, as the French chefs do always. So, let's make this wonderful 
carnivore dish to the top level, like five stars restaurant. So this is Mediterranean type of food. Yes. And this is like a Mediterranean grandma would make something like this. And the Mediterranean diet has red meat in it. Red meat, eggs, quail eggs, uh, cheese, everything from the carnivore. A lot of red meat, actually. When we say red meat, in Mediterranean countries, throughout the history, especially uh, during antiquity, mainly goat and sheep were eaten. We didn't have so much larger calves. And uh, buffalo came a little bit later. It became very uh, popular in the Mediterranean zone. And of course, we have this Mediterranean type of cow, which is smaller cow and it's uh, producing A2 milk, so it's really good for you, easy to digest, and we tend to use those uh, cows mainly for milk production. But as you know, if you are a dairy farmer, you know that in order to have dairy, you need to have some baby cows, so baby bulls usually end up being a really tasty veal. We had veal yesterday, today we're gonna go for lunch. So uh, it's our ancestral food, guys, so if I use a word baby, don't get overwhelmed. It's just something that we as humans have been eat eating for like thousands and thousands of years, so it's normal. So, there we are. We're going to see the next stage in a while. Star eggs, quail eggs with spices. Now we're going to add it all over our sauce. Look how nice and creamy. This is a moment when our uh, brown meat turns into real pasta sauce or bolognese or Athenese, Athenian sauce. So we're gonna let it cook a little bit longer. And as you can see, it's gonna get thicker. Now, if you want some more color, you can add some small paprika just a little bit more well this is almost like another teaspoon but this is definitely going to add a beautiful color here i have already a part which i prepared you see how nice it looks so as the good french chefs do at the end to thicken and make something smooth and silky add some butter Always add some butter to your sauce at the end of cooking. And you put some salt in already. Yes, I forgot earlier to show. I put my uh, flour of sea salt. I love this thing. This is like as natural as it can go. It's, it's the crystals that don't have any additives. It uh, doesn't have those anti-caking agents. It's just natural salt that's been collected from the top of the Adriatic Sea nearby here. You can use any type of good salt that you can find in your area, but always use the salt from your area, guys. You need the minerals from the area you live at. If you're gonna take this Himalayan salt and you don't live in Himalayas, like, like you will not have all the benefits that you think because they need to import it. They need to add additives in order to preserve this salt, especially if it's like uh, very, What's the English word for this when it's thin and it's like almost like a powder, you know, they, they serve this in uh, some gourmet restaurants, etc. They are adding so, so many additives, you don't want that. Try to find nice mineral salt uh, from the area where you are living. If it doesn't exist, then go for European uh, sea salt because here in the south of Europe, Mediterranean sea salt, I would recommend. We are still okay with it. We are still, still not so polluted, so it's safe for you. Of course, animals love salt. For example, lamb will taste awesome if the farmers offer sheep and, and lamb some salt to lick. The same goes for uh, goats. Goats adore salt. So if you want to like have fun with kids and offer some salt, like a piece of uh, a rock of salt, salty rock that you can find in any country which uh, has seaside, then animals will like run after you. We as humans also, we need salt. So we don't be afraid of salt. Those people who are saying that salt's not good for you, they eat a lot of carbs, they eat a lot of grains. So yeah, if you combine grains and salt, then it's not good for you. But if you're on carnivore diet, don't be afraid of salt. Use your good salts. So we are almost ready. As you can see here, I'd like to show 
the sauce is ready, the pasta is ready. Now we're gonna serve it with some amazing cheese. Allow me to show. So we use Maria Zviezda. This is a Trappist cheese made by monks, the Trappist monks. We're gonna, we grated it here. And you can see how nice it looks. It smells just divine. They hold the secret. They say that there's only, in a monastery, there's only two of them knowing the secret to, for, to proper fermentation and aging of these cheese. So uh, when they are very old, then they, they give this secret to younger monks and then it goes from generation to generation. It's a really nice cheese if you can find uh, Trappist, try it. But you can use any Mediterranean cheese. I would go for Greek Graviera. I would go for maybe some Lithuanian cheese, Giugas, which is also good. I would go for any aged goat cheese, sheep cheese, Parmesan is so famous all over the world. Everybody uses Parmesan, but find a good cheese that's made in your area. Research the market and find something good. This is gonna be the topping, and it's gonna be a genuine pasta dish. It's gonna be this, which is our, uh, let's say, egg noodles, which is like, yeah, crepe made with only eggs and spices, and then meat sauce, it's gonna be a proper, meal for a family we have all generations here and we gonna test it also on kids and on us grown-ups so let's see how it's gonna look okay very excited to try out this new carnivore pasta athenaise to my right i have steliados one of our greek guests to my left is my boy lucas and finally on the far side we have apollo the spouse of the beautiful roberta yeah. let's try this stuff so let's see if they're gonna like what we made here. So I'm gonna first serve you some of our zoodles. They are not zoodles, I'm joking. They are carnivore pasta. pasta. Because you know, those people cutting the zucchini and trying to make it noodles never succeed. Because something that's uh, so blunt in flavor can never replace this richness that you get from eggs, butter, and spices. So let's see now, how will boys react to this? I wonder. First, we are serving them some pasta. I think I put too little here. <laughs> too little here too. Too little, is it? Okay, I want to keep some space for the sauce because the best thing comes on top. Okay, now, Apollonas. We're going to let the girls eat, we promise. Okay. <laughs> I'll think about it. Maybe. We will eat later. I apologize <laughs> for a right. small... Okay, here we go. Now the table is super clean. Nothing happened. Okay, you can see that the... Maybe we could show the sauce here. So, look at it here, in this corner, in this uh, like edge of the wok. It's so creamy and it's so... Uh, Tomato, like no tomato in it. It's just eggs and spices. So our lamb goes on top of our uh, carnivore pasta. Carnivore tagliatelle, let's say. We're gonna add a little bit of this juicy part so that it gets nice and moist in all parts. And then we're gonna add a little bit of this wonderful cheese to make it a real this is how it looks a real pasta uh, plate okay let's go for the second of our testers or tasters <laughs> i really am looking forward to see their reaction I'm gonna add some juice okay cover it well with meat you are a carnivore you need a lot of meat and then use the cheese as your spice. You don't need a lot of cheese. Meat is the main ingredient. So use some cheese as just the spice of your wonderful dish. Here you are. Thank you. Lucas, we're gonna give you first a little bit of sauce to make it moist and nice and juicy. And then we're gonna put you some meat. cheese on top and if you can eat more I'll make you a second plate okay okay now Apollonas I know he likes it uh, with less sauce so I'm gonna mm -hmm. give, give him you know you know your man 
he eats less sauce, more meat. So I'll make a, a plate for him the way he likes. Some would say, you're cheating now, you're gonna make him like it more, but no, it's just, I want everybody to enjoy it. So I'm really, 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 does anybody want black pepper? You would like some black pepper, just a little bit? Oh, okay, let's freshly uh, ground. ground some of the combination of black, white, and red pepper corn you can see here, guys. Would you like some? Oh, Anybody? Oh, yeah. Offers. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Enjoy your carnivore pasta. And let's see your let's reaction. Let's, let's, let's see let's, the reaction. Let's describe it after we've eaten it. Is it good? I'm really, really glad you like it. Still, any your opinion? Mm -hmm. It's better than pasta. Really? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. So, Lucas, does it appear like regular pasta or do you think it's better? It doesn't taste like pasta, but it could taste, it tastes like a different type of pasta. A different yeah. type of pasta. You yes, like, you like it's it? It's nice. Did it's you eat some more of it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> finish the first plate. I ask, I'll assemble the second plate mm -hmm. for you. What about you, Apollonas? Is it good? I think it's uh, absolutely magnificent and it's exactly what we need. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's nutrient dense food. You have all these animal based foods that you are full of vitamins and minerals uh, and, of course, protein, guys, and a lot of collagen because of the meat and eggs. Exactly and the whole family can eat, anybody. You can invite guests and you can tell them, let's have carnivore dinner. And then probably they would be like, oh, how, what's, gonna, what's that gonna be like? And you tell them, we'll have pasta, don't worry. And it's a great conversation starter. How can we have pasta if it's carnivore? Well, this is how you can have pasta. Because the meaning of pasta is just pastry. It's the same root of the word. So pastry can be made without flour, without carbs, without sugar. You can make sweet dishes with this. You can grow some really uh, nice mascarpone and maybe add just a little bit of monk fruit and you'll have yourself a keto dessert, something for your kids. So this is a versatile recipe. Yeah, and I have to say, there I don't taste any egg at all, really. I mean, you're right, if you don't so, taste the egg, you can't appreciate it. It feels very much like noodles. Uh, I haven't had them in years, but what I recall. And the meat is wonderful, the spices, it's a beautiful, beautiful meal. Thank you so much.